Hey everybody, Alex here. Welcome to A Stilly, my new channel. We're going to start out today with a tour of my new car. So I present for your consideration my 2017 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack 392 Shaker Edition. I guess we'll go ahead and start with a cold start. I have had the mid mufflers removed, so anyone wearing headphones or using loudspeakers, I suggest you adjust accordingly. Thank you and enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome for the rest of the tour. Uh, I just moved over to an empty parking lot because I live in a townhouse and I'm kind of smooshed between uh, two cars at all times. So uh, I came over here to this empty parking lot because I really like Canadian geese and because there's uh, a little more room to work. So I said before that uh, uh, really the major, uh, one major mechanical mod that I've had done to the car is I've had the mid mufflers deleted. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, the exhaust system is a little bit different in this car than maybe many. Uh, the mufflers are actually mid-mounted in the middle of the exhaust under the passenger compartment. And then there's two resonators just behind uh, the back bumper. Uh, and it's quite, uh, quite a popular mod to get those mid-mufflers cut out and just straight pipes put in. Uh, it adds a little more volume to the exhaust overall as well as... In many cases, most people would say uh, a bit more of a growl. Um, I like it. I think it's not over the top. There are a lot of people that have the resonators cut out as well, so that it's just kind of straight pipe all the way back. And that's just a little bit more than I want. So for now, I'm pretty happy with the way it is. Uh, I had it done uh, at a place called uh, High Flow Exhaust in uh, Manassas, Virginia. That's in Northern Virginia. Uh, they did a good job in the cutting and uh, the fabricating and the welding part. Uh, the only thing that they didn't do was uh, they sort of forgot to adjust uh, the rear half of the pipes. So as you can see from this picture, uh, once they welded everything in, this is what I found as I went to wash my car about two days later, was that the whole rear end uh, it part of the exhaust and uh, most obviously the tips were totally crooked um, much to my chagrin I uh, I luckily uh, went on YouTube with this problem and actually found that uh, on each exhaust tip there's a 13 millimeter bolt which you can loosen uh, and then if you give the tip a whack with the hammer uh, rubber mallet uh, uh, in my case uh, it'll actually loosen the exhaust tip and you can actually move them pretty much in any direction you want uh, and then uh, tighten the bolt back down and you fixed your crooked uh, exhaust problem but with these oval tips as you can obviously see uh, the problem wasn't really easy to hide so uh, I had to fix it right away and ended up doing so on my own uh, so buyer beware uh, if you have your mid mufflers done uh, you might want to double check and make sure they did a good job of uh, lining the exhaust back up. Um, the, the only other thing really that uh, I had done to the car other than that are really cosmetic. Um, as you can see I've uh, put this badge here on the back just to denote that it's a, uh, a 392 scat pack. Uh, I found the badge online. If you want to know specifically where I got it from, just comment below. I can tell you where I got it. It was 65 bucks. 
There's certainly much cheaper ones out there, but this one actually is pretty well made. Um, it's sort of uh, like plastic acrylic, like a curved face plastic acrylic uh, over uh, metal. Uh, and sticks on, very permanent. Um, so, uh, pretty happy with it. Moving around the side, well, obviously you can see um, this big old uh, rumble bee on the side here. That is certainly not stock. Uh, these uh, vinyls are something that I found online really even before I bought the car um, and said, you know, if I, if I do manage to get the car, uh, I was pretty sure I was going to go ahead and get these, especially if I got the Shaker Edition, because I really like the way they're kind of in a matte black color, and they kind of go with these matte black, where I think that these are referred to as satin matte black stripes that go all the way across uh, the trunk over the roof and then down around uh, the Shaker intake on the hood. Um, if you look really closely, you can actually see that uh, the satin black on the uh, the vinyls of the, uh, the two Rumblebees are actually uh, kind of a darker black, but uh, I don't think it's that noticeable, so um, I'm pretty happy with the way they look on the car. I get a lot of thumbs up and a lot of positive feedback on them, so uh, I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, obviously, it comes... Uh, stock with these uh, little rumblebee guys here on the side fenders um, up until 2017 which uh, again that's what uh, this model is uh, you also had a little 6.4 liter under there but uh, that uh, went uh, went away in uh, 2017 and up um, but I'm not too sad about that because I got a shaker edition so I have a big 392 Hemi on the side of uh, the intake right there in the middle of the hood so not too sad about that. Uh, this car, like uh, pretty much any scat, standard scat pack, uh, rides on uh, Goodyear uh, F1 supercar tires in uh, 245 width, which is way too skinny uh, for a car that makes the sort of power that this one does to the rear wheels. Uh, unfortunately, uh, to get 275s, you have to order like this uh, Dynamics package that's like 22, 2400 bucks that adds wider wheels. I'm not really sure why because you can actually put 275s uh, on these wheels. These wheels are uh, 20 inch by uh, 9 inch width and you can put 275 tires right on them. But uh, they give you different wheels uh, with the Dynamics package and the 275 tires. I believe are uh, Pirelli P0s if you get that package. So that's going to be one of the upgrades uh, I'll be doing to the car um, in the not too distant future because uh, it's a little bit difficult to get the car to, uh, to grab with what we have going on here. Um, I'm going to pop the hood here. The car does have a uh, smart key system as so many cars do these days. You just have to have the key fob in your pocket. Uh, so that's in proximity. Using this button here on top, you can actually lock the doors and then um, with the key in your pocket, if you just grab the handle, it'll unlock. You can open the door there. Um, I'll come down here and find my hood latch. And come around here. I apologize if you can see that my car is a little bit dirty. Um, the car actually was uh, fresh from being washed the first time I filmed this a couple days ago, but unfortunately by the time I got home and looked at all my coverage, I came to the realization that it had been too windy and there was no audio that you could actually hear or understand. So I'm out here refilming it and it has rained unfortunately. So under the hood, as you can see, really right off the bat, uh, the shaker hood piece pretty much uh, dominates um, the engine bay area. Um, it, it does work. It is a functional hood scoop. It goes right down here to um, a Mopar cold air intake. Um, a lot of people uh, gave me kind of a little bit of business when I was um, talking about getting a Shaker Edition scat pack because they're like, oh, you know, you know, just get a regular scat pack. All your pain is for like a hole in the hood with a cool hood scoop. You can put a, a cold air intake in there yourself for, uh, you know, 300 bucks. You're just wasting, you know, all this money because 
mean, admittedly, a Shaker Edition does cost, uh, I think, like four and a half, about, about 4,500 more uh, than the regular 392 Scat Pack, but it comes with a lot more than uh, just the hood scoop. Um, it, it includes the leather interior, the, the, the cool, uh, the ventilated and heated seats, the heated steering wheel, the power seats, the power uh, driver's wheel, the Alpine stereo, a whole bunch of stuff that I'll probably get into in the next video. We'll go over the sticker and, and, and what I paid for the car and how I feel like I actually got uh, an unusually good deal. Uh, hence the reason why, you know, I've only had this car for two months. It's now April. I bought it uh, uh, February 15th of 2018. Uh, and right off the bat, you're kind of like, well, you said it's a new car, but you bought it in February of 2018, but it's 2017. Well, I actually found one that was brand new, uh, still on the lot with 34 miles on it. Um, in 2018 so I got a really good deal on it and there's actually uh, to my knowledge uh, a few of them still there at said dealership so the only other thing I kind of really wanted to show you under the hood other than it's a nice big honkin uh, you know 392 cubic inch 6.4 liter Hemi engine making 485 horsepower and 475 uh, foot-pounds of torque um, is that in old school Mopar fashion, if you look real closely under there, you can see that the engine block is still orange. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so moving on, let's put this up here. It's, uh, you, that's how you can tell that it's actually a real shaker. Uh, they do sell kits uh, where you can buy a fiberglass hood with a hole in it and uh, a snorkel similar to this one. However, um, those typically will not have the shaker sticker uh, inside the hole in the hood there. Uh, at least that's what I'm told. Um, the front end overall, I really like. Um, people, I, I see people taking, um, taking issue with the fact that it has an RT badge on it. And they're like, well, an RT is a 5.7 liter. That's, that's not a scat pack and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm kind of of the belief that this is a Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack, so I don't mind that the RT badge is there. In fact, I kind of like it because I think that little bit of red kind of offsets um, the, the, uh, the, a lot of the black mesh in the grill, so I kind of like it myself. Um, and uh, the Challenger script, to my knowledge, is uh, exclusive to the Shaker Edition cars. So normally it would be in sort of a regular block print. Uh, the car does come standard uh, with uh, fog lamps, daytime running lights, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, yeah, moving around. Uh, oh, I didn't mention you, you got your four piston Brembo brakes there. Um, they come standard on the scat pack. Uh, you can on several shaker levels end up with uh, six piston Brembo's. Um, this does have a, uh, a Bilstein complete uh, Bilstein shop uh, system, suspension system. However, um, again with the track pack, uh, which I believe you, you is one of the uh, ways you can get the six piston Brembo's. Um, get a three-way adjustable Bilstein uh, suspension system, um, but I'm quite happy with, again, with, with the one that comes standard with it. Um, it, uh, it is kind of adjustable in that there is a comfort mode and more of a sport mode, so it's at least two-way adjustable, um, and I'm not really going to be taking this thing out on, uh, you know, a road course or twist, tw twisty track anytime soon, so um, not a big deal to me that it doesn't have a totally adjustable you know, race built in suspension. Um, so uh, in the car, uh, we have, um, you know, uh, all what are pretty typical amenities, uh, power adjustable mirrors, uh, power windows, power door locks. Uh, it does have a leather interior um, as part of the upgrade of the shaker. Um, it does have power seats. They are heated and ventilated. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit strange is that although they are uh, multi-adjustable, the front seats, for some reason the actual rake of the seat is a manual control level. 
I, I don't know why they opted to do that. This here is for the uh, four-way adjustable lumbar. Um, the back seat for this car, up for this type of car, uh, I'm told is very roomy. Uh, I recently took a, a road trip down to Atlanta and I had some family ride in it. Uh, and they said, although it uh, can be a little bit difficult getting in and out of it, once they're actually sitting in the seat, they said they were, they felt like they had plenty of room and that they were uh, quite comfortable. They didn't actually ride very far, so uh, we didn't really test that theory too often much, but uh, they seemed pretty happy. Now the leather uh, is uh, sort of two different styles. You got this soft touch uh, leather here, and then uh, across the middle of the seat, you have what appears to be sort of suede. Um, and of course, both of the seats have the uh, Seriously, with the geese? Really? Um, uh, you got the uh, Scat Pack B, um, the, the Rumble B stitched into the seats there. Uh, like that a lot. Um, comes with the uh, Dodge floor mats. Uh, alloy pedals were actually an option that is part of the Scat Pack. Um, uh, is part of, the, excuse me, not the Scat Pack, the, uh, the Shaker Edition. Um, I, I read on the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, on the window sticker that it came with alloy sport pedals, but uh, all I seem to have was regular rubber ones, uh, you know, black rubber pedals like you'd find in pretty much any car, and uh, I came to find out when I was going through the car in the trunk, I found a small box, and there were the pedal covers. So there are actually covers that go over the... Uh, the uh, just typical what you would find in just about any car, you know, black rubber pedals. Uh, I like the looks of them. Uh, they're comfortable and they have a fair amount of grip, but uh, I thought that it was kind of amusing that I guess that's something that the dealer's supposed to install and they just kind of forgot to do that. So we can get in here and uh, get away from Mom and Claw Goose. We'll hop in. Again, as it's a uh, smart key access system, all you have to do is just hit the smart, uh, the, uh, the start button here. Well, foot on the brake, hit the start button. Let me start right up. Um, pretty much dominating the interior here, and one of the kind of main center points is the uh, the. Uh, ooh, let me turn that down so you can hear me. The uh, 8.4 inch Uconnect um, screen here, uh, it, it, right here in the middle of the dash. Um, you can control just about every aspect of multimedia and various aspects of uh, the uh, dynamics of the car from this uh, screen. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, uh, just go over kind of some of the basics of it. Uh, the screen itself is fully configurable in that all these little icons, they can be moved. Uh, you can move them over to a second screen if there's ones that you don't use as much or there's duplicates. You can also move icons down to the bottom row here uh, if maybe you just want to have at your fingertips the ones that you use the most. Um, then they'll be right there. Um, it does have an automated climate control system. Um, you can just set the temperature and forget it. Um, it does have a uh, dual zone for the uh, driver and front passenger. So you can set that up so that uh, it, uh, uh, I have it synced using the sync button so that if I adjust it over here, it adjusts both, but you can turn that off and obviously adjust them independently. And there's the buttons for, uh, you know, you can tell manually where you want the airflow to go and the fan speed and all that fun stuff. Um, okay, so back here to the middle. Uh, what I've put in the middle here is the uh, driver heat, driver vent, and heated wheel adjust uh, settings, uh, excuse me, switches, as well as the passenger heat and the passenger venting um, for their seat. Um, it does have one kind of cool option in that, uh, and I only noticed this uh, kind of through use and then um, came to uh, to uh, find out in looking through the owner's manual a little bit. It does have a setting where if it's uh, a certain uh, temperature outside, for instance cold, uh, when you start the car it will turn on the driver heat automatically. Uh, it will heat the steering wheel automatically. 
Um, and uh, same thing in summer, if it's hot enough out, it will turn on uh, the driver's uh, seat uh, venting, as well as the passenger if it's occupied. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, obviously, um, uh, I'm pretty sure all chargers and challengers have this same 8.4 inch screen. Um, what trim level you have, I guess, decides uh, what stereo option it's actually connected to. As I said, my the Shaker Edition comes with, uh, I believe it's a nine speaker Alpine um, with a uh, an amplifier. Um, I think at one point there was a Beats audio option. I, I don't think there still is. I know there's still like an 18 speaker Harman Kardon that's available. Uh, I don't know what trim level you have to get to get that. I have a feeling it may be a specific, like, you know, entertainment package or electronics package uh, that gets you, I think that's the, the top of the line stereo. It's like 18 speakers with two amps or, or whatever. Um, let's see, you can turn the, the auto dimming mirror on and off. Um, the uh, under controls, all that is is just uh, a, a screen that's all the, the heating and cooling for the seats that I have now moved into uh, the main screen. The phone, uh, that's your Bluetooth telephone. Um, uh, it does have um, like voice dialing and voice command for your telephone and all, and, and actually many other things. You can voice command uh, the radio, change stations. Uh, skip tracks and things like that. I rarely use it for anything other than voice dial and, and things like that, but uh, the options are available. Um, there's settings, obviously, you can use to set up uh, uh, this screen uh, and many aspects of the car. Media, that's uh, any media devices you have connected. I, as it stands right now, have um, an iPhone that I basically use as an iPod. Uh, with all my iTunes music on it connected as well as um, my my Note 8 cell phone for my cell phone. Um, down here underneath, uh, basically what you have is uh, shortcuts to a lot of the buttons um, at the screen up here. Um, like I can adjust my uh, individual climate controls here. Uh, I can turn the AC on and off, which I must say um, we have had a few kind of hot days as spring is starting here and there's been times I've gotten to the car and it's been pretty warm because it's obviously it's a black interior um, and I, I haven't actually had to turn on the actual AC and uh, the air is blown pretty damn cold so um, I would say contrary to some of the things that I've heard uh, about chargers and challengers at least my um, air conditioning seems to work super super well and can only imagine how cold it would get if I actually engage the AC AC uh, you got your front and rear defrost defog um, you can uh, there's a manual adjustment for the fan speed uh, volume for the stereo uh, manual tuning knob um, there's a quick mute button uh, there is a sport mode button which um, if I press it it will uh, show me here on the uh, driver's uh, information screen that I'm gone into sport mode with the little green flag up there and it tells me that traction control is in sport mode a lot of people think that that actually turns traction control off completely uh, I'm not really sure about that um, I think it dials it back a certain amount and it, it, it definitely uh, gives you the feeling of being in a muscle car and that you can quite easily with that on uh, well sport mode on and that that aspect of traction control off put your foot down and yeah you can do all the burnouts that you want to and quite easily um, but I don't think it turns it off all the way or maybe it does turn off traction control and leaves stability control on but my understanding is that there is still a, a certain safety net in the background where if uh, things get too out of control, which again kind of makes me uh, lean towards thinking it's stability control that's still on, um, it will kind of bring you back in um, without letting you get uh, um, too crazy or, or spin yourself or, or do, you know, something, you know, well, even more terrible. Um, 
So that's what the sport button does. The super track pack, uh, what that does is that gives you uh, the ability to set up the various drive modes. You got your default mode, which is basically uh, the mode the car is in when you start it. As you can see, the engine and transmission are in normal. The paddle shifters are off. The traction control is in normal. And uh, the steering, uh, there's three settings. Uh, it is in normal driving mode when uh, in default mode when you first start the car. Now, also, there again is sport mode and there's a sport mode set up. You can flip these switches and change them. Uh, I basically have everything to the max on for sport mode. Uh, the engine and transmission are in sport. The paddle shifters are on. You don't have to use them, but they are available. And if you begin to use them, then it puts it right into manual mode. So you have to shift. Uh, the traction control uh, goes to sport mode. So again, things are a little more loosey-goosey. And the steering goes into sport, which actually tightens it up. Uh, a fair amount. Uh, also under Super Track Pack, uh, you can set up and use your launch control. This car does have launch control. Um, you can set sort of the RPM that you would like the uh, launch control to engage at. Um, I like that it's kind of a little dodge icon on there that uh, actually moves up and down as you make the adjustments. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, and then there's a button to engage launch control. And uh, basically what it'll do is, um, actually I think I have to have the wheel straight. Uh, and if I hit the button, it actually tells me what I need to do. I think in the driver, yep. To launch road uh, must be in drive. Oh, okay. So we'll put the car in drive. And to launch, we press the brake and quickly apply full throttle. And then I would release and we'd go flying, but we're not gonna do that, obviously. So I'll put it back in park. Um, so that's kind of the launch control. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for a drive mode setup. That's what the Super Track Pack button does. Um, now, uh, one thing I do like about this car, we'll go back kind of to the main screen, um, and uh, all um, uh, challengers and chargers, uh, since they have this 8.4 inch screen, they also all have a backup camera um, that comes standard with that, with the moving sight lines as you move the steering wheel. Um, I think that's a great option. You know, I, I, in all honesty, I don't know. Maybe an awful lot of cars have those as standard now, but I think it's cool that uh, Dodge has those pretty much uh, as Chargers and Challengers are concerned all the way across um, the board um, in regards to trim levels. So um, you have that, and what I was getting to next was that you also have um, audible parking sensors as well as that backup camera, which you can turn off with that button. Um, you can turn off traction control uh, without putting it in sport mode by just pressing this button. Uh, this button will turn the screen off. I actually found that kind of useful on my recent road trip. Um, when driving at night, um, with all those icons on the screen, it does actually um, create a fair amount of brightness in the, in the, uh, in the dark cockpit of the car at night. So um, having the ability to turn that off, I actually thought was pretty useful, it's pretty neat. Um, Let's see, uh, down here you can see if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have, I opted for the eight speed automatic torque flight transmission. Uh, I did that for two reasons. The first being is, well, it's plain old faster. It can shift faster than you. Uh, it can find and use the power band through all the gears better than you can. Um, and uh, also very important to me is um, I do a fair amount of driving uh, for distance uh, and my daughter goes to boarding school about three hours drive away from here so that sort of adds to um, the driving that I do and um, it uh, this car if you have the automatic version um, it has cylinder deactivation so once you get on the highway as long as you're not in sport mode um, the car will um, whittle the motor down to four cylinders and you will get um, four cylinder type um, uh, gas mileage. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's uh, gas mileage of 
a typical four-cylinder car these days gets pretty uh, exemplary gas mileage in most cases. Um, this thing, I think, is rated at like 15 and 26. Um, now, as you can see from the mileage here, um, you might ask, my, uh, you know, right away, okay, if this car is only two months old and you bought it brand new, why is there 3,249 miles on it? Well, I recently uh, took a, uh, a round trip, road trip, down to Atlanta to visit some family and, and drove the car down there and back. Um, so that accounted for um, about 1,650 miles. Um, of what's on the car and I can tell you um, having put a fair amount of highway miles on there now um, I'm pretty sure I was getting uh, more towards 30 miles to the gallon than 26 miles to the gallon if I was you know on the highway with the cruise control set you know or you know just being extremely light on the gas because I'm just trying to maintain highway speed um, I did pretty darn well um, I uh, like I said I, I'm, I'm thinking with the math that I did I was getting closer to probably more like 28 to 29 miles to the gallon at its best um, so that uh, that option has been worth it to me um, you do have the option to manually shift the car you can put it in drive and then move it over here and then up and down um, when you are in manual mode, the car is truly in manual mode. The car will not shift uh, in manual mode until you shift it. So you can scream it to absolute death and blow your motor up um, if you want, uh, if you're not careful, um, because um, uh, the car won't shift. It is a true manual mode, and of course we have these uh, magnesium uh, steering wheel mounted shift levers here that will uh, shift the uh, gears from up there if you choose to. And again, uh, all you have to do if you're in sport mode is just hit one of these once and then that, it becomes manual mode. And you have to actually uh, move the gear shift and then move the gear shift back to auto to, to take it out of uh, manual mode, or at least that's how I do it. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is that this actually has um, the car's user manual. Um, as part of the Uconnect um, and I thought that that was actually kind of something that was a little goofy and that probably nobody would use but I actually have had need to consult the manual for at least two things that I can think of uh, one I think was like type of antifreeze or something um, just so I could have one to, to in the trunk to carry with me and, and something else. And it, this is actually really easy to use and uh, navigate and, and get you to the information that you're looking for um, in the user manual pretty quickly. So uh, way to go Dodge, pretty handy there. Um, as you can see, steering wheel mounted controls that I mentioned earlier, um, these are for uh, the voice commands. If I press that, Call Reagan. There are no contacts in your phone book. Oh. To make a phone call, <laughs> say something like dial two. Cancel. Yeah, I just realized I didn't have my phone connected. So that's it's not going to find my phone book. But uh, um, it actually does have a pretty extended list of uh, voice commands that you can do. As I said, uh, a lot more stuff than I at least use at the moment. Um, I only really use it for voice dialing. You got a green phone, and so if you have an incoming call, you can answer. Obviously, the red phone, you can hang up. Um, over here, you got your cruise control settings um, on the wheel. Um, uh, there, there is uh, an available option for adaptive cruise control for these cars. It's not really something that I was particularly interested in. Regular cruise control works just fine for me, so um, that's all I have there. Um, this. Uh, keypad here is for uh, the driver information center that's in between uh, the two main gauges. I, while I do really like, uh, and there's a little bit of glare so they're a little bit hard to see, but I really do like these uh, kind of old muscle car style conical uh, gauges here. Um, at a glance the speedometer can be a little bit hard to read so I keep it with um, this uh, digital speedometer uh, in the middle because that's you know just easier to read for me um, 
but uh, you have a fair amount of choices. There's vehicle information, uh, which has a variety of different um, gauges that you can keep. There's an oil life gauge, um, which you can actually reset, which I think is pretty cool. So if you, uh, if you change the oil yourself, you can reset the oil life back to 100% and uh, then it will count down according to, uh, I'm assuming, mileage. Uh, that would make sense, being as it's at 46% and I'm at 3,200 miles and the first suggested um, oil change is at 6,000 miles. So that makes perfect sense. Um, so that's all the different stuff that's in the Driver Information Center. There's also uh, uh, live tire pressure so um, there's active tire pressure information there um, scrolling down there's also performance now um, this is something that I've never had in a car but I think it's probably um, something that's becoming more popular in performance cars sports cars muscle cars uh, and that is you have a sort of built-in set of the typical uh, kind of speed testing and speed gauging that you might do. As you can see, there is a 0 to 60 um, speed test, which uh, my best, you can see up there, is 4.4 seconds, which, incidentally, you know, maybe I'm not looking at the right YouTube videos, or maybe I my friends haven't done so well that, you know, have uh, these cars, but 4.4 seconds is the best 0 to 60 time that I've seen on one of these gauges yet. Uh, I haven't seen what, uh, uh, specifically what the uh, manufacturers suggested uh, that this car will do 0 to 60. My understanding is it's supposed to be about 4.2. It's supposed to be low 4s. Um, so 4.4, considering I did it in February when it was freezing cold outside, and the skinny 245 width tires that I haven't upgraded yet, uh, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, so the 0 to 100 I apparently haven't uh, purposefully recorded anyway. Um, there's also an eighth mile timer. Um, there is a quarter mile, which my best is 13.3. Uh, um, pretty sure I can get down. I, I, I'm hoping to be able to get down to uh, about the mid 12s, maybe even low 12s. Um, but, uh, you know, that's none too shabby for a 4,200 pound car. Um, let's see, and then there's braking distance, um, there is current G-forces, there's peak G-forces that have been exerted, there won't be a lot under there other than towards the back under hard acceleration, because again, I, I don't really throw this thing into hard corners or anything like that. Um, there's a lap timer, so you can set up, uh, you know, a certain lap distance, and then what it'll do is it, uh, once you, I guess, you bing over that distance, then it will record that as a lap, and then it'll continue to record lap times to you, so, you know, you can see if you improve or what have you. Uh, there's a top speed. Uh, obviously, I, it's only gone 123 miles an hour since I've had it, which, of course, happened uh, down in Mexico. Um, I always uh, obey the traffic laws of these fine uh, United States that we live in and uh, any speed testing um, that would occur outside of the legal limits obviously always occurs either out of the country or on a closed course um, for everybody's safety. So back to 0 to 60. Uh, let's see, we have fuel economy. Uh, that's giving average fuel economy right now. It's at 12.7 because most of the driving I've done lately has been in sport mode and locally um, considered quote unquote city driving um, as much as you would find in my area. There's the trip information. Obviously, there's trips, um, uh, trip gauges like there would be in any car. There's two of them. Um, audio uh, that's going to show it whatever you're using uh, like if you were on satellite radio um, it would show you know what station you're on and what's playing whatever um, it's on Bluetooth now because as I said I have my uh, my iPhone uh, I, uh, um, iPhone slash iPod uh, connected um, then there's messages no idea. I don't know if this is somewhere where they would put like recall messages or anything like that. Um, but uh, I haven't seen any messages appear yet. Uh, there's a screen setup. Um, 
these, um, although they may look like gauges here, the fuel gauge there and the temperature gauge, they're actually digital representations of gauges. And uh, the setup is you can actually move this stuff around um, and uh, decide what goes where. Like for instance, uh, I have it set up so it'll just show what gear I'm in, park, uh, drive one. Um, there is a gauge where if you go through the setup, uh, it'll actually show one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then just show like in big number which gear you're in. So if you're in four, there'll be small one, two, three, and then a big four, and then five, six, seven, eight. You get the idea. Um, I just have it set up so it has the outside temperature, 61 degrees. It has the current fuel range based on the sort of driving you've been doing uh, lately, me city driving and the fact that I'm in sport mode. Uh, I have a fuel gauge here, I have a temperature gauge here, but again, you can move all that stuff around. Uh, and then moving back down one more takes us back to the beginning, which is uh, the speedometer. Um, there's really not too much else to talk about. Um, you've got uh, uh, auto dimming mirrors on, on the main rear view mirror as well as the side mirrors. That's something that I really like. Uh, I actually had a Camaro SS, a 2010 Camaro SS that I uh, got into this car from, and that was the first car that actually had um, auto dimming mirrors on the side as well, and I found that that's something that I really like. Uh, I like that at night, you know, if I'm looking to make a lane change and I look to the left, I'm not blinded if there's somebody, you know, just behind me with his, with his headlights right in the, uh, uh, the side view mirror because it dims for me, and as you can see, uh, there's a little sticker on there that I found on Amazon that I stuck on there for a joke. I can tell you where to get that if you want. Um, also, I didn't mention before the vinyls on the side. Um, the guy that I found that makes the ones that I had put on, um, there are a lot of options. He has a lot of different designs. Um, so if anybody out there thinks that, you know, uh, vinyls of that size uh, for a Mopar car might be something that they'd be interested in, uh, again, you can uh, you can reach out to me in the comments below, and I'd be glad to tell you where I got mine from. Um, they're pretty reasonably priced. They're not cheap, um, but uh, they're uh, they're said that they're supposed to last somewhere between five and seven years, depending on how well you take care of them. Now, I didn't give a lot of thought to what that might do to my paint. Uh, if I ever have to take them off, am I going to have wonderful, super bright spots of paint underneath? Hopefully, it's something that a detail could can even out. But you know, we'll see. Maybe I'll just have to get another set of those uh, vinyls uh, when things run out. Um, uh, not much more to talk about. I mean, you know, it, it has everything that uh, you know Dodge has. I mean, there's a lot of soft touch leather in this interior. I really like the steering wheel. It's thick where it needs to be thick. Um, uh, it's leather, um, you know, every, most things are kind of leather appointed in this interior. And I, I think Dodge, Dodge is doing a really good job. I, I'm really happy with this car. I'm really happy with the interior. Um, it, it's comfortable to me. Um, I, I feel like I'm, you know, a little bit babied when I ride in it and I, I'm happy with, uh, happy with the way the controls work and, uh, you know, certainly, you know, uh, if we're not even talking about the interior, the performance of the car is just phenomenal uh, for what they're charging for these automobiles. I think they're really doing uh, muscle cars justice, uh, and they're really doing those of us that like uh, a muscle car type car um, justice and a fair amount of value for our money. And uh, I'm really happy with it. Um, so that's my first video. That's a little tour, uh, you know, for anybody that uh, is thinking about getting one of these cars or is just curious what they're all about. Um, you know, I know I probably left out a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm going to, uh, in the next video, go into a little more detail about uh, what the car cost. Take a look at the sticker because, uh, as I said, I got actually um, what I believe to be uh, a pretty amazing deal. I found a dealership that just happened to be uh, pretty close to me and uh, compared to, I did a lot of searching and I looked at cars in Georgia, I looked at cars in Michigan, I looked at cars in Florida, I looked at cars um, 
yeah, in upstate New York, I looked uh, really all over the East Coast uh, and some Central, and, and this this dealership seemed to really have the market cornered. Uh, and, you know, I guess every car dealership says, oh, we're a premier Dodge dealership, so we can give, uh, you know, uh, the greatest deals on these cars because we sell more of them than anybody else. But uh, I think that there there may be some validity to uh, them saying that because it seems like a lot of these cars got funneled in there. Uh, when I bought mine, I really couldn't find any 2017s still out there, brand new on people's lots. And I found this one, and like I said, to my knowledge, they actually still even still have a few more of these, uh, and they're a great buy for the money. Um, so I'm gonna go into a little bit more about what I paid for the car, uh, how, who I did financing through. We'll look at the sticker, um, and uh, yeah, um, you know that'll be the next video. So if you're interested. Uh, and you liked this video, then, you know, uh, I think you're supposed to hit like. Uh, again, it's a new YouTube channel for me, so I'm pretty new to this. Um, I would love to see people subscribe. Um, that would certainly motivate me to do uh, more videos, uh, both about my car and about cars in general, about Mopar stuff. You know, I also, I do some tech stuff. I have a drone, I do some drone stuff. So um, the uh, channel will have some variety. So I'm hoping, you know, A Stilly will have something for, well, at least anybody that's interested in tuning in. So um, that'll do it. You know, uh, I've rambled on for what looks like close to 45 minutes now. So <laughs> uh, you guys go get something to eat or something and uh, check back with the channel. Subscribe so that you can check back and see, uh, see I'll post a new video just as soon as possible. Until then, everybody take care. Peace.